Hey there, AP Physics students. Um, let's talk about assignment number four. I would like you to read section 7.5, do these examples, questions, and problems. I try to have them done by Monday. Uh, today's big topic is the work energy theorem. And this is a big idea and uh, in, in physics and a very important idea. And it's, it's really not that complicated or hard to derive, but um, it's you know, it's something that you have to really grasp, understand at a fundamental level. If you do, you're you're gonna you're gonna be glad you did. So anyway, let's let's get started on here. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, the work done by a net force acting on an object, and uh, and then we're gonna see what the result of all that work is going to be. And we're going to call that result, by the way, a, a change in kinetic energy. Now let's take a look at a real simple situation. Here's some massive crate. It's on a horizontal flat plane. And I'm going to apply a force to it like this. I'm just going to call it F for right now. And this force is going to be a constant force. And uh, it's going to uh, make this thing go some displacement, delta X like that okay and so here we are uh, at the end of this displacement and uh, there's not going to be any friction in here uh, obviously there's a, a weight but it's canceled out by the normal force so this is the net force acting on the object so the work done W uh, well the work uh, is equal to uh, well, actually, let's start with the, the basic definition of work. Let's review this a little bit. Remember, we said this was F dot dr. I mean, look at that scary expression. Okay, it's got dot products and forces and dr. But now what you do is you take this most general form of the work equation, and let's break it down to fit the problem that we have. Our, um, our force is a constant. It comes out of the integral. And notice that the force is in the x direction, and our displacement, our all, all the sum of all of our drs. If I add up all my little drs, it's just delta x. So, so what happens is that this integral, which looks so fancy and scary, is just the force times the displacement. Okay, and that's the work done. Well, now if we think about this in terms of um, kinematics, we know that. Um, well, uh, if I look at this and say, well, let's draw a free body diagram of this guy. Okay, there's the weight pulling it down. There's a normal force pulling it up. Who cares about those because they don't really do anything. But here's our net force. This net force, okay, this force is the only force that's causing any acceleration. Is equal to ma. So what I can do is I can substitute ma into that expression right there. Now, why would I do this? Well, you'll see why in a second. So the work done, now this is the work done by the net force. This only works, I mean, this, this derivation is only true if the force being applied to our object is the net force. So the work done by it is going to be um, the uh, uh, ma, that's our net force, times delta x. Well, now let's see what we're going to do. Um, I want, what I want to do is, is get this expression for work in terms of the result of doing work. And the result of doing work is that this thing is going to be moving. See, let's say it, it, it has um, zero velocity right here, or, you know, uh, v naught equals zero. It's not moving. Um, so the result of doing this work, we can tell that this thing's going to be, it's going to be hauling, okay? I've done some force, it's accelerated the, uh, that mass, and so it's moving, and that's the result of doing this work, is the motion in that object. So I want to get this in terms of that. Well, some smart person figured this out. Well, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. Well, um, I, I, I said that v naught is equal to 0, just to make things simple. 
It didn't have to be zero, but we're going to make it zero. And then I'm going to solve this for uh, delta x. So now delta x is equal to um, uh, v squared over 2a. And now what I can do is substitute this into here. And so the work done uh, by this net force is going to be equal to um, ma times v squared over 2a. Now look what happens. The acceleration cancels out. So the work done is going to be equal to 1 half the mass times the velocity squared. Now this is really important. Here, the work done by the net force has caused this massive object to move. And we call this quantity right here, the work it took to make that massive object move from rest to this final velocity, we call this kinetic energy. Now remember that we said that energy is the capacity to change, you know, the environment. Well, or, you know, to do work on the environment. Let's say something had kinetic energy. It had mass and it's moving. Well, it can do this much work on the outside world. Okay, it can apply a force through a displacement. And so anyway, um, so this brings us, well, we're almost there. We're almost there. I, 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 I made the simplifying assumption here that the initial velocity was zero, just so that we could define kinetic energy. But let's, um, oh, and by the way, we use the letter K, capital K, to, to represent kinetic energy. And, um, uh, but let's go back to this. Let's assume that this thing wasn't uh, moving at zero velocity. What if it had um, some uh, velocity initially? Well, we can just do the same thing. We could say that, um, uh, let's go back to this definition. What is delta x? Well, delta x is equal to, well, take this equation and solve for delta x. It's v squared minus v naught squared over 2a. Well, now I'll take this and substitute it in for delta x in my work equation. Work is equal to mass times acceleration over v squared, v naught squared minus, I'm sorry, the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared over 2a. And this cancels. And now I get the work done is equal to um, 1 half the mass times the final velocity squared minus 1 half the mass times the initial velocity squared. And so what we're going to say here is that if the object had some initial velocity, some non-zero initial velocity, this is going to be the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. And this finally brings me to the work energy theorem. The work done by the net force is equal to a change in kinetic energy. This is the work energy theorem. Okay, it's very cool, it's very important, and you can use it to solve a lot of very interesting problems, which we will do in part two uh, of this uh, lecture on section 7.5.